Hello, hello, good evening, welcome. Um, so here we are for class number seven. I hope you guys are doing great. And uh, well, we, I also hope that we are going to have the chance to fulfill this lesson with um, good learning as this evening we're going to be finishing the celebrations vocabulary. Um, I wanted you guys to have a little bit of a practice. So in a minute, we are going to have a chance to go ahead and pick one or two words from the whole vocabulary to make sentences um, with. Um, apart from that, we have a conversation that we're going to be practicing. And um, there is the possibility that we're going to get to work on um, subordinating conjunction, conjunctions, which is one of uh, those topics that can be kind of tricky to understand, but at the same time, once you understand it, it is very, very useful. But as per usual, you know, we're going to start with a question, the lesson of this evening. But before that, even, I wanted to share um, the fact that tomorrow we are, in fact, going to be having a class. So, yeah, tomorrow we're going to have class number eight, which is going to basically finish up the replenishment for the, the whole course. And next Monday, we're going to start on a clean sheet, um, starting from, well, you know, the, like the regular schedule from Monday to Thursday. So um, this evening, the question is actually kind of personal as per usual. But today, um, I'm going to be asking you guys for a specific thing that you may like to do. All right. So the question is, when you go to a restaurant, what is like your favorite dish to ask or to um to request? So when you go to a restaurant, what is like your favorite dish, your favorite section of the whole restaurant experience um to ask for? Is it the drinks? Is it the main course? Is it the dessert? So what is like your favorite thing to request or to ask for? When you go to a restaurant. Es, eh, la pregunta específica sería, cuando vamos a un restaurante, ¿cuál sería como la parte, nuestra parte favorita, verdad? Como lo que más nos gusta ordenar. Um, si es, por ejemplo, la comida principal, si es la bebida, o si es el postre, las entradas, eh, ¿qué es como lo que más les gusta a ustedes pedir cuando van a un restaurante? ¿Y cuál sería una opción, verdad, que ustedes puedan mencionar? que sea como su favorito de algún restaurante que tengan en mente. So, um, starting with uh, Aristides this evening, we're going to give you Aristides the first chance. So tell me, when you go to a restaurant, what is your favorite experience, like your favorite thing to ask for? Hi, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, food, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Chinese food um, pupusas maybe <laughs> okay so Chinese food or pupusas will be like your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant yeah all right very good um, how about um, Alejandra what would be your favorite thing to ask for when you have the chance to go to a restaurant good evening Good evening. Well, I like to order piña colada mm, okay. <laughs> when I go to a restaurant. <laughs> Very good. With the spicy things in it or without the spices? Mm, with <laughs> with okay okay very yes. good very very good nice yeah piña colada is a really a really nice drink very sweet um and if you ask it with the spices you barely notice the spices so very nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, great to go. Thank you for sharing. Um, how about Sori? Sori de Cardona, what is your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. E, my favorite e, is meat mm, okay. and dessert. Meat and I dessert. love you, dessert. Okay. What is the your favorite dessert when you go to a restaurant? Cake, chocolate, oh, chocolate cheesecake, cake? Uh -huh. mm, okay. and cheesecake. All right. Crazy for cheesecake. Yeah, I, I also 
um, to starve, <laughs> or I'm, I'm also crazy about cheesecake. I, that's not, not maybe my favorite, but it is one of my favorite uh, desserts. Because I will say that my very, very favorite is tiramisu. It is not commonly served, <clears throat> but yeah, cheesecake is just great. So very good pick. Yes. Yeah, very good. Delicious. Yes, highly recommended. <laughs> highly recommended. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, Thanks, you know, teacher. A, a fun fact, un, un dato curioso, a mí el helado que más me gusta, de hecho es el helado de queso fresa, no sé si ya lo han probado ustedes, el, el de Sarita. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think cheese is, is really nice and uh, if there's a chance to have something um, that has some of a cheese flavor, you know, it's always good to have it. All right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so... Very good. Um, how about Marvin? Marvin Salazar, what is your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant? Uh, teacher, uh, in the breakfast, lunch, or dinner, teacher? Oh, very good question. Um, let's say for dinner. Uh, for dinner, uh, I like the Italian food. And so maybe Mexican food, only burritos. Um, okay. And Salvadorian food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pupusa. Pupusas, yeah, that's the regular for a Friday or for um an uh, like a regular dinner in El Salvador. So yeah, if you have a chance to have pupusas, go ahead, go for them. And um I think Italian, in my case, I like Italian more for like for like a lunch thing because of all like the the i think like it's like a strong dish to have for dinner in my opinion um but yeah italian is also really really nice um how about um uh, rodrigo rodrigo morales what is the, your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant Okay, so no answer coming from him. Um, what about Rodrigo Melendez? What is your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant, Rodrigo or Daniel? Uh, pupusa. That's, Pupusas. That's that. Okay, very good. Yeah, you know, very classic, very Salvadorian, but still, uh, pupusas are tasty. They are good. So why not? You know, if you have a chance, go for pupusas. Um, how about Olga? What is your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant, Olga? Well, um, when I go to the um, restaurant Puerto Marisco, mm -hmm. I like uh, uh, mariscada. I don't, uh, I don't say mariscada. Mariscada will be ooh. soup. <laughs> no, it, it's normally in English or what they say will sell you for a mariscada is a seven seas. See, sí, oh. seven seas. Mm -hmm. Pero no necesariamente es, es exactamente lo mismo, ¿verdad? Pero algo así es como la, como la promueven. La mariscada sería seven seas, que se refiere también como a decir siete mares, porque trae de diferentes, um, pues, mariscos, Marisco. ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ajá, diferentes mariscos. Oh. Ahora, you can add cream, como la mariscada, or you can uh, have it with no cream. Sí, entonces with igual, not ¿verdad? cream. Yeah, with cream or with not cream. So seven C's is basically the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you. You like seven C's then or mariscada? Yes, like I love this. <laughs> okay. It's the same for me. You know, I when I had the chance to to live in the US, I remember mm -hmm. my family in California, they will take me there for a couple of days. And um, my dad, when he was younger, he lived in California as well. And he worked mm -hmm. at a Salvadorian restaurant. And mm -hmm. at that restaurant, they sold a Seven Seas soup that was just amazing. And um, mm. I remember I will ask for it like all, like every night. Now, the problem was that they didn't sell it every night. Um, so when they didn't have Seven Seas at that restaurant, we had to go to a Thai restaurant, sí, un, un restaurante tailandés, which mm -hmm. served a similar kind of soup, but yeah. they didn't have any cream because they didn't have the same practices as Salvadorians. So yeah, mm -hmm. but the difference, the main difference between a regular um, mm -hmm. like uh, seafood soup and mm -hmm. a Thai soup is that Thai 
has like spices. Tiene como bambú yes. y un montón de, de palitos que la hacen como más picante. Uh -huh. O sea, no sé cómo describirlos porque honestamente no tengo el nombre para, para eso, esas uh -huh. especias, pero um, hacen que la sopa se sienta un montón como más picante y más dura because they uh -huh. have like those roots and bamboo and uh, it's not like a, like a similar thing to potatoes, but they're not potatoes. So yeah, uh -huh. they have like different vegetables and it's still, yeah. it is a really good soup. Yeah. So yeah, oh. if, you, if you have a chance. It's different. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is different, it's different, but it is good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, then moving on, what about uh, Jennifer? Jennifer Noemi, what is your favorite thing to ask for when you go to a restaurant? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, I like to order burgers with french fries and soda. All right, the whole dish. So burger, french fries, and soda. Great. Yeah, a burger is always a safe way to go. So very good. Um, how about the case of uh, Rafael? What is uh, one of the dishes that you like to ask for when you go to a restaurant, Rafael? Uh, when, when I visit a restaurant, well, I, I like the, the Chinese food. But um, I like every every food, and I like um, the mix to flavors, uh, sugar and and, and salt, um, with soha soha sauce. Okay. Uh, I like this flavor flavor flavors, mm -hmm. and uh, I love natural use okay very good so chinese food offers all of that they have the mixture of like sweet sours and salty and also the soja sauce uh which is always going to bring almost the same kind of mixture um to the table and yeah chinese i think is a really good option for a good meal almost at every time like i mean and for lunch or for dinner, I think it's always going to be to be good. So good pick, very good. How about you, Imelda? What would be a, a dish that you love to have when you go to a restaurant? Yeah, good. Uh, good evening. Um, good evening. I have a little trouble with my connection, but um, if I had chance. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe pizza hot waffles to breakfast oh really oh very good you know in my case i i have yeah. always uh-huh sorry bueno uh, les estaba diciendo i have always wanted to to try pizza at breakfast because i think i have heard they are really really tasty but I have never had the chance because in the Pizza Hut that is near my house uh, here in Usulutan, they don't serve breakfast. Like they only start serving from like 9.30 or 10 a.m. until dinner, but they don't have breakfast like at all. So yeah, that is something relatively sad that I have never had the chance to try. But at the same time, you know, it's just part of what it is. Okay, so I think that is what we're going to be talking about tonight for the question of the evening. Sí, para los que no les pude eh, preguntar, perdón. I'm really sorry, guys, but tomorrow we're going to, um, to continue working on that. Okay, so I was telling you guys, um, de estas palabras vamos a ir entonces creando um, oraciones con ellas. Así que ahorita lo que quiero que hagan es que antes de, de pasar a explicar las últimas de la última columna, eh, me gustaría que vayan viéndolas todas, ¿sí? tratar de recordar qué significaba cada una de ellas, y seleccionen dos para que puedan elaborar um, una eh, oración para cada una. ¿sí? Una oración para cada una de las palabras que ustedes seleccionen. No importa si se repiten, no hay problema, pero... Eh, Sí me gustaría, ¿verdad?, que cada uno de ustedes pueda seleccionar dos palabras. O sea, no dos de aquí y dos de acá, de estas otras, sino que, o sea, puede ser una de estas que a ustedes les guste y una de estas otras. Y si no les gusta, o sea, ninguna de estas y las dos que a ustedes les gustan están en esta última eh, 
pues slide igual, ¿verdad? Pueden elegir las de cualquiera, pero ustedes de toda esta lista deben elegir al menos dos palabras para poder crear una eh, oración para cada una de ellas. Bueno, voy a darle lectura a cada una también para que ustedes recuerden cómo se pronuncian y ya después, ¿verdad? Pueden ir eligiendo también cuál es la que más les gusta para eh, escribir sus oraciones. So we have celebrations, birthday, celebrate, birthday party, Christmas Eve, Easter, Christmas, anniversary, wedding, New Year's Eve, carnival, New Year, christening, good day, good Friday, sorry, good Friday, event, Lent, graduate, baptism, gift, honeymoon, retire, Halloween, bar mitzvah, parade, uh, it's okay, Imelda, don't worry, don't worry. I understand. Okay, so bar mitzvah, parade, festive, festive, um, season, Thanksgiving, balloon or balloons, be born, Mardi Gras, ribbon, wreath. Okay, we have the last couple of them. It is procession, festival, present, birth certificate, costume, greeting card, get married, fasting, public holiday. Hasta ahí les había comentado qué significaba cada una, ¿verdad? Les dije fasting, it is when you stop eating anything, like when you stop eating um, like hard foods or um, some specific drinks, that means that you are doing fasting, es cuando estamos en ayuno, ¿sí? Fasting se refiere a eso. Um, public holiday is a holiday that is celebrated by everyone, um, like uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, I think also Independence Day. So those are days that are like um, holidays for everyone and not for only specific sections of the population. Um, a reception. A reception is a gathering, a meeting, or a party that takes place after a ceremony. So receptions normally go after ceremonies. Ceremonies are the process in which a legal or spiritual um, ritual takes place. So that is normally what we are going to understand for a ceremony. A ceremony has like a series of steps that is going to follow and um, it is going mostly going to represent like an, an important thing for the people um, in the ceremony. So a reception is what comes after. In receptions, normally you have like more people, you have music, you have food, of course, that is the time when you get to eat and all that. So a reception uh, it is also a friendly word to Spanish, to the Spanish counterpart. It will be recepción. So it's basically the same. A fancy dress. All right. So a fancy dress is what happens um, when you have uh, like a party or a wedding to attend or any kind of like special celebration and you want to look the part. If people are supposed to be dressed formally, to be dressed up for that, um, you are wanting to wear a fancy dress because that way you're going to look also appropriate to the party itself. So a fancy dress sería un vestido formal. Específicamente esto se va a usar, ¿verdad? Eh, para para hablar acerca de los vestidos, sí, solamente para la mujer. No vamos a poder decir que un hombre va a usar un fancy dress a menos que se ponga vestido. En ese caso, pues igual, ¿verdad? Sería un fancy dress. Ok, Ramadan. Ramadan is a Muslim... No, it's not a celebration. It's a, like a commemoration. It is, I think, the seventh month of the Muslim calendar. And during the whole month, they do like fasting almost every single day. So that means that during Ramadan, um, Muslim people, they don't eat during the day. They eat only uh, during the night time. So from, I think it's like from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., there is no food consumption. So it's only going to be fasting. And uh, this helps them to go and be a little bit more down to earth and analyze how they um, have behaved during the last year and the actions they have carried out if they are doing good or not um, to the and also what it does is that it helps them to get closer to Allah or the representation they have for God so yeah Ramadan um, Ramadan no tiene una, una traducción sino que se entiende también verdad como el Ramadan all right Passover 
a Passover, it is basically the same thing as saying Easter. The only difference between these two is that a Passover is mostly celebrated for Jewish people. That is like the main thing. Uh, Easter is celebrated with like bunnies and um, the sweet eggs and the egg hunting and all that. Um, that is like the, the new look of Easter. But a Passover is like a more classical estate. And it is like the time that um, when people commemorate the um, resurrection of Jesus, but in a more classical way. So that's why this is normally accompanied by the Jewish practices and not by the regular people practices. And then Pancake Day. Pancake Day is a day that people celebrate. Now, not people in regular, but this is mostly uh, for industries or restaurants that sell pancakes. And during Pancake Day, what they do is that they will normally um, have tons and tons and tons of like reductions or giveaways for pancakes. And uh, they will like make it very easy for you to access to, to one or two pancakes for free um, or at least at a, rel at a relatively low cost because they are celebrating Pancake Day. Okay, so those are all the celebrations. Ahora, lo que les decía, ¿verdad? De todas estas, ustedes entonces toman dos palabras para que creen sus oraciones. No sé si ya durante este momento algunos ya te han tenido la oportunidad de crear sus oraciones. Eh, y si ya las teacher, tienen... Sí, dígame. Uh, teacher, excuse me, may I question? Uh, the, the, the sentence is a normal the sentence? Yes. Or... No, any kind of regular sentence that you want to create. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Like, for example, you can say, I saw my friends at the procession yesterday. So that's just like a regular sentence, just including the word procession. Um, Sulma, tell me. Okay. Can you please read them? Okay. okay. The Catholic Church makes procession in the August festivities. Okay, good, 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 good. And what will and, be the other one? And my tour, they ask you to fasting at the last two times a month. Oh, very nice and very interesting. Okay, very good. Good sentences. Thank you, Sulma. Okay, okay. how about you, Sori? Mm. Okay, my birthday is my favorite and special day. I like to celebrate. Okay, very good. E okay. other, mm -hmm. the procession is a true tradition in the Holy Week. Holy, Holy Week. Yeah, Holy Week. Very good. Yeah, the processions are good traditions or church traditions for Holy Week. Very, very good. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Alguien más que ya está listo? Ok, esta vez no los voy a presionar porque no sé si ya están listos, así que bueno, vamos a, a dar el chance que sea de forma voluntaria. Si no, pues bueno, ahí sí ya le va a tocar, ¿verdad? Ok, Imelda. Go ahead, please. I have one. Uh, I never used a custom before. Ok. Costume. 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 Use a costume before. Mm -hmm. All right. Ahora, una pequeña cosa es que recordemos que cuando hacemos, hablamos de ropa, decimos where, ¿sí? Where. Pero como ahí estamos hablando en pasado, sería oh, wore. Oh, yeah. Ajá. Yeah. I never, I have, I Muy never bad. wore, ¿sí? Wore a costume before. Pero igual, es una, una pequeña, un pequeño detalle, ¿sí? I never wore a costume before. Yeah. <laughs> ok, very good. The, um... The another one. Uh -huh. mm, the season that I most like is um, verano. Se dice summer. How do you say verano? Summer. 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 But when it, but when is is windy? Con viento se dice windy. Mm -hmm. Yes, windy. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so very good. The season that you like the most is summer when it's windy. Esa de hecho es una, una oración compleja porque al final agregamos como ese detalle, ¿verdad? Con una, eh, de hecho, de las palabras que vamos a estar tocando esta noche, que serían las conjunctions. Um, si solo decir summer, pues queda bien, ¿verdad? Pero si decimos summer when it's windy, aclaramos un poco más de cuál es el estado o el momento que a mí más me gusta. So the season that I like the most is summer when it's windy. Very good. Thank you very much, Imelda. Okay, Sandra. Hello. Hello. Uh, I never been to a paradise. Okay. I mean, like this, I am worried because I will retire soon. I will what? Sorry. Oh, retire. I will ah, retire. Retire. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. I am worried because I will retire soon and I have never been to a parade. All right. Those are really good good I mean good sentences. So, very good. Thank you very much, Sandra. Okay, Aristides, tell me. Okay, vamos a probar. Uh, my sister danced very well at the, at the carnival, 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 mm -hmm. carnival. Carnival, carnival. Carnival. Mm -hmm. The other, my favorite time is Christmas because I travel with the family. Okay, very good. My sister danced very well at the carnival, and my favorite time is Christmas before because I travel with the family. Very, very good. Great, great um sentences, Aristides. Thank you. Okay, Olga, how about you? What are your examples? Okay. Um, Monica y Fernando has the wedding in Planes de Renderos. Okay. Thanksgiving is a celebration to USA and, perdón, USA. It's okay. And people give thank, thanks for the provision and protection of God. Very good. Very, very good. Okay. So the first one is mm -hmm. um, Fernando y quién dijo? Monica. Y no nos invitaron. No. Ah, Lo negó ten, ten years ago. Oh, ok. Ok. Bueno, fue ya, ya hace rato. So, uh -huh. te les perdona entonces. So, okay. Fernando y Mónica had the wedding y had planes de renderos. Very good. Eh, para que vean, vean. La gente con, la gente con nivel. Uh, and then um, Thanksgiving is, you said, a celebration when people, I, I mean, an American, in ese caso, cuando tenemos ese tipo de, 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 de expresiones, eh, yo sé que a muchos no les gusta, porque es algo que, o sea, es algo que yo comprendo y de hecho lo comparto, que a muchos no les gusta, ¿verdad?, que se usa ese término, decir American, cuando uh -huh. las cosas de las que decimos son solo de Estados Unidos, o sea, porque América uh -huh. es el continente, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés, o sea, es la forma en la que lo vamos a decir, American, um, cuando nos referimos a celebraciones, a cosas que son propias de Estados Unidos, sí, uh -huh. nos vamos a, a referir de esa forma, ¿verdad? An American celebration. Oh, okay. Porque si decimos, o también podríamos decir a celebration from the USA, Sí, o sea, se puede, pero eh, suena mucho mejor si solo decimos American Celebration. Sé que hay muchos, como les digo, los que no se sienten conformes con eso, o sea, yo incluido, no me voy a negar, pero pues bueno, o sea, no se quisieron inventar una palabra para su nacionalidad y se, se quisieron adueñar del, del continente completo, ¿verdad? Y pues así se quedó ya. Ok. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome. Ok, ya estaba yo pensando, ¿será que me va a tocar ir a San Salvador? Dije yo, y ahorita no puedo. Para la fiesta, por Dios. Bueno, ok, Alba, tell me. Ok, Alba, what are your examples? Thank you. My first sentence is, my favorite time of the year is Christmas. Also on December 15th is my birthday. All right, very good. So my favorite time of the year is Christmas and um, on December 15th is my birthday. Very good, very, very good. And um, two, uh -huh. I would, I would like to, I would like to go to New York and celebrate New Year's Eve. 
because I don't know how it is. Very good. Esa fue una muy buena eh, oración incluyendo, bueno, en ambas oraciones usted incluyó dos de las palabras, así que yes. muy bien. Very, very good. Um, so yeah, I would like to go to New York and celebrate New Year's Eve because I don't know how it is. The same for me. When I was, when I had the chance to live there, I wanted to go, but my family didn't let me. Um, so yeah, I think, um, uh, I think it is a special celebration. However, many people say that for us, for, for people from here, from, from like Latin America, it is mm -hmm. too cold because they say that, uh, streets in New York are super cold. freezing. Yeah. They are freezing during that time of the year, Wow. but still, you know surrounded by people if you want to to get through the celebration i think a cup of coffee will do it see o sea, whatever it is amazing yeah that's what they say they say it is really really good saben que ahora que me acuerdo eso lo voy a contar así rapidito lo más rápido que pueda de hecho yo una vez tuve una experiencia no igual pero algo similar um, que yo tuve la suerte que cuando yo estuve en Estados Unidos se celebró el super bowl en el estado donde yo vivía o sea la ciudad cerca que yo tenía, estaba como a 20 minutos, era la ciudad de Minneapolis. Um, o sea, justo ahí se celebró ese año el Super Bowl. No fui tantas veces porque, o sea, era una, esa es como una celebración de dos semanas, ¿verdad? Y pues como tenía que trabajar, no, no, no tenía chance como todo el tiempo de ir. Pero fui tres días. Eh, lo que sí sé, o sea, es que eso era durante el invierno. Eh, la mayoría de cosas que habían como atracciones eran esculturas de hielo. O sea, solo para, para una idea, ¿verdad? Estaban en la calle y no se deshacían. Es porque la ciudad es muy, muy fría también. Um, pero yo recuerdo que la última vez que fui, ese día sí sentía un frío horrible. Pero con una, un vaso de café, casi como de un litro. No, era de chocolate, perdón. Casi como de un litro que compré. Con eso aguanté el resto de la noche. Así que, o sea, basado en eso, yo pensaba que sí, que iba a poder aguantar eh, ir a New York porque yo quería ir a la celebración de Año Nuevo. Pero el problema fue que como yo tenía familia allá, ¿verdad? Ellos me llevaron para donde ellos y me dijeron, no, es que nadie va a ir, que no sé qué, así que no me dejaron ir. Pero, eh, o sea, sí era algo que yo quería vivir también, la celebración de Año Nuevo en Nueva York. Pero igual, algún día será. Ok, very good. Uh, moving on now. A ver, ¿quién más está listo? ¿Quién más tiene ya sus oraciones listas? Mi teacher. Ok, go ahead, please, Mayra. There are many balloons at the party. Ok. Um, I will go to the Good Friday procession. Oh, very good. There are many balloons at the party, which are also including a couple of words that are very interesting there. And um, I will go to the Good Friday procession. ¿Sí? Voy a ir a la procesión del Viernes Santo. Very good. Very, very good. Es okay. un ah, es cierto. Es una de las más, eh, ¿cómo decirlo? Como más clásicas, ¿verdad? Solemnes. Que hacen. Nos uh -huh. más solemnes. Sí, sí. Muy bonito. Ok. Good. Very good. All right. Uh, anyone else? ¿Alguien más que ya está listo? Teacher, I, okay, I Marvin. Only sentence. Okay. In the Christmas, I like meet up with my family for Thanksgiving. Okay, very good. You included two words uh, in the same sentence, and it is really good. Very nice. Okay, thank you very much, Marvin. All right, anyone else? You're welcome. A ver, um, Alejandra, are you ready? Do you have your two sentences ready? Mm, yes. Um, I would like to travel and celebrate as I'm giving next year. Okay. When a baby born, they should have a birth certificate. All right, very good. When a baby is born, they should have a birth certificate and I would like to travel to celebrate Thanksgiving next year, or I mean this year. All right, very, very nice. Very nice. Okay, ahora, una cosa importante acerca de esta celebración del Thanksgiving es que en las películas casi siempre vemos, ¿verdad? Que como que lo más importante que presentan es el pavo. Um, Experiencia personal, el pavo, o sea, se ve rico porque se ve rico en la, en, la, en la tele, pero no es tan bueno. 
es bien insípido. Uh, se lo digo porque, o sea, el tiempo en el que yo pude vivir allá, la mitad del tiempo lo viví con una familia que comían un montón de pavo y al final salí chino de comer tanto pavo porque era así, o sea, bien insípido y en Thanksgiving fue como que, dude, o sea, en la tele se ve tan bonito, pero prefería los, los hot dogs que el, que el pavo. Um, pero igual, cada quien, ¿verdad? Pero sí, a mí. No usan muchos condimentos, ¿verdad? No, les huyen. Que uno... Les huyen mucho. Bueno, saben que ahorita que estamos en materia, les voy a comentar de eso. Um, una cosa que me pasaba muy a menudo, más que todos los domingos, era que el señor de la casa, o sea, porque pues en la cosa esta de la pasantía que yo hice, nos teníamos que mover de casa, ¿verdad? O sea, que vivíamos um, cinco meses y cinco meses. Entonces, en la primera casa donde yo viví, el señor los domingos siempre se levantaba y hacía el desayuno. Eran huevos, tocino y alguna, algún pan tostado y así, ¿verdad? Entonces, pero para mí era una experiencia horrible todos los días, o sea, todos los domingos cuando me levantaba, porque él no cocinaba con absolutamente nada más que sal, los huevos. Entonces, y el olor del huevo, o sea, la chuquilla que nosotros decimos, uh, invadía toda la casa, o sea, porque era una casa pequeña, entonces en toda la casa se sentía el olor. Y ellos se reían de mí porque, pues, vendían allá salsa, casi como la natura, pero un poquito más gruesa, o sea, no era tan así, tan molido, ¿verdad? Entonces, y yo había ya tomado la costumbre de que mejor compraba eso y le ponía de esa salsa a mi huevo, porque tampoco me gusta el sabor de la, de la cosa, así nomás. Así que ellos se reían de mí por eso, pero era porque, o sea, el, el olor, el solo olor del huevo, Así, plain, no sé, pero me, me mataba. Entonces, por eso mismo, no le gustan mucho los condimentos. A lo único que le ponen un montón de condimentos es cuando hacen carne asada. Pero aparte de eso, nada que ver. La sal es lo único y la pimienta tal vez. Pero sí, o sea, el, eso, eso del pavo les encantaba en esa casa comerlo. Pero, o sea, por lo, por lo saludable, digamos. Pero no necesariamente por el sabor. Pero bueno, ok. Um, ¿Anyone else? ¿Alguien más que ya esté listo? Olga, por ejemplo. Yo ya pasé. Oh, sorry, sorry, perdón. Re Rebeca, Rebeca. Yes, um, Halloween is a celebrate that we don't have in El Salvador, but kids like it a lot. And the other, my cousins wedding was the last weekend. Okay, very good. My cousin's wedding was last weekend. And Halloween is a celebration we don't have in El Salvador, but kids like it a lot. Rafael, how about you? Do you have your sentences ready? Well, um, I never celebrate Halloween uh, because um, to me it's, uh, uh, it's not appropriate celebration. Okay. And the best, the best season of the years is summer. Uh, so it's very hot, but it's a perfect time to go to the beach. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So, yeah, Halloween is a weird celebration, I understand. So, yeah, I never celebrate Halloween because it is not an appropriate celebration. Good sentence. And uh, I the, the best season is summer because it is the perfect time to go to the beach. Very good sentences. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. ¿A quién nos hace falta todavía? No quiero que se me escape nadie hoy. Eh... Jennifer, I think you haven't done yours, right, Jennifer? Okay. Um, my mom's birthday is next month, and I have to buy a present. <coughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to buy a fancy dress for my graduation. Oh, very good. My mom's birthday is next month and I haven't gotten a present and I'm going to buy a fancy dress for my graduation. Very good sentences. Muy bien, muy bien hecho. Um, Rodrigo, Rodrigo Melendez, how about you? What are your sentences? Okay, so no answer from him. How about Francisco? Francisco vino algo tarde hoy, así que le vamos a poner tres oraciones por entrar tarde a la clase. Tres en una, de un solo. Sí, de una vez. Ah. 
<laughs> no, tell uh, me, Francisco. Uh, my wife uh, gonna gonna retire in two weeks. Okay. Um, and the other three, uh, I don't, I don't let, I don't, I don't celebrate Halloween because I don't like costumes. Okay. I didn't celebrate Halloween because I didn't like costumes and my wife is going to retire in two weeks. Muy bien. Very, very good. Ok, bueno, entonces creo que con eso ya cerrábamos lo de las oraciones, ¿sí? Si alguno se me salvó, pues felicidades que se salvó. Um, pero vamos a pasar a esto. Esta es una conversación, ¿sí? El título, very easy, very simple, my wedding day. Esa la vamos a estar practicando básicamente de inmediato, o sea, ahorita mismo. Um, and in this conversation we have two people. We have Jill and we have Emiko. Those are the two people taking part in this conversation. Um, wait, yes, Rafael. <coughs> oh, okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, Jill and Emiko are the two people taking part in this conversation. And uh, the way it should go is as follows. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a, re a reception with family and friends. So what are receptions like in Japan? There is a big dinner And after the food is served, the guests give speeches and sing songs. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes. They give money to the bride and groom. Oh, sorry. Yes. And they give money to the bride and groom. All right. So... This conversation is basically about a wedding. That's the title of it, wedding day. However, it is taking place right after the 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 the, the wedding took place because this person Jill is basically looking at the pictures, and that's where she is starts to or when she starts to ask all these questions about um, Emiko's um, wedding. Now. The explanation she provides, Emiko, first, uh, she mentions that the pictures that Jill is looking at were taken after the ceremony because the ceremony in Japan is normally like a private um, kind of celebration. Now, if you guys were wondering, a shrine, it is like um, como un templo, pero normalmente, o sea, el, uh, en El Salvador conocemos más o menos, ¿verdad? El decir templo. O al menos mucho yo escucho que, o sea, lo usan en las iglesias para referirse como a la, a la iglesia o al, 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 al edificio, ¿verdad? En el cual se reúnen todos. En cambio, un shrine se refiere a un templo, pero es más bien um, una clase de templo específico como para la familia. Um, no sé si ustedes alguna vez han visto ese tipo de, de referencias o si han visto la película Turning Red de, de, de Disney. O sea, en la cual se muestra eso, ¿verdad? O en Mulan también. Um, cuando se ve que tienen como un templo en la casa o un espacio en la casa donde están como todos los ancestros y todas las personas, ¿verdad? Eh, pues que en algún momento han sido parte de la familia. Eso es lo que conoceríamos como una shrine, um, como un templo familiar. También puede ser un templo dedicado a un dios específico porque pues igual, ¿verdad? Diferentes culturas tienen también diferentes representaciones de deidades. Entonces eh, puede ser eso, un templo dedicado a algún dios específico o eh, puede ser también algún templo que por algún motivo tenga importancia espiritual para la unión de las parejas. Entonces una shrine se va a entender como eso, como un pequeño templo. Y that's why um, only like family members and close friends go to the ceremony. That's what she mentions here as well. Um, now, another thing is that... Uh, 
So Jill wants to know if there's like a lot of people coming to the celebration, but to the ceremony, there's not. To the reception, well, that depends. Depending on the family, depending on the amount of friends they may have, it can be like a big reception. Then she mentions that for the reception, there's like a big dinner. And after the food is served, the guests give speeches and sing songs. This is a practice we don't really have in our country. Like this, I think almost never happens when, when people get married here. Uh, but in other cultures, it is a very common thing to do. Like uh, for people, for, for some of the um of the guests to give speeches. Sí, give speeches es cuando, cuando damos como un um, discurso ¿verdad? acerca de las personas que se están eh, casando, puede ser acerca de uno, de los dos, dependiendo de la relación que pueda tener la persona con la pareja, pero es algo que no muy comúnmente se hace en nuestro país, o sea, se hace quizá de vez en cuando, pero no es algo acostumbrado, digamos. Um, la parte del sing songs, o sea, también es algo muy común de las, de las bodas asiáticas, o sea, en el que pues, las familias eh, pueda que tengan ya canciones eh, que daten, ¿verdad?, de, 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 los, de los ancestros y todo. Entonces, y este tipo de canciones son las que también se van a representar o a, a eh, tocar en el día del matrimonio, ¿verdad?, o la boda de alguno de los miembros de la familia. Now, another thing, and something that is really weird, is the fact that before people, before guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. So the presents, see, ¿sí? recuerdan, verdad, los regalos, they're not given to the to the um, bride and groom. It is instead the bride and groom who give presents to the guests. So it is basically the other way around. Now, what do the guests do? Well, the guests, they do get presents, but they give money to the bride and groom. So I think that is where... Some people got the idea of uh, going for this um, regalo de sobre que es tan común hoy en día. Um, the fact that, you know, in, in other cultures, uh, instead of them receiving presents, they receive some money. Um, but still, that is a part of like cultural differences that exist in the world. Ahora bien, no sé si ya tienen la captura de esta conversación. Vamos a pasar, como les decía, a practicarla justo ahora mismo. Um, así ya no tenemos ese pendiente. No sé si tienen alguna duda con alguna de las palabras de esta conversación para así aclararla de una vez antes de pasar a la práctica. Bueno, si no hay dudas, entonces en este momento voy a empezar a abrir ya los breakout rooms. Sí, traten de tomar entonces sus capturas eh, o las fotos que van a compartir. Y pues, eh, let's go then. Let's go practice.
only family member? Well, usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony, but afterward we had a reception by family and friend, friends. So what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big diner and after the food is served, the guests give a special or sing song. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes. And they give money to the bride and groom. Okay, next. Okay. Si quieres algo de, de Jill y, y otra se de... Eh, yo soy oh, mi... No, no. Ah, o oh, oh, no, otro que bueno, haga. Yo... Otro que haga. Otro Ajá, que haga. Otro. Sí, porque pensé que era... Present. They get, get present? Yes, and they give money to the bride and groom. Okay. Okay. Si quieren ahora Podemos... nos combinamos. Ajá, hay que intercambiar. Okay. Primero la dama. Eh, si gusta empieza usted, Silma, y yo sigo con la, con la otra. Vale. Ok. Your wedding picture are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine, when people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at, at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of, of people there? Well, usually only family members. Hmm. Yeah. It sounds like uh... It really is. And then before the guests leave, leave the bride and groom give them present. The guests get present? Yes, and they give money to the bride and groom. Okay. Okay, si quieren cambiamos papeles. Lo leemos nuevamente. Bueno. Yes, sir, Rebecca. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. This picture were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At the shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at the at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, usually only family member and close friend go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a reception with family and friends. So what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big dinner. And after the food is served, the guests give a special or sing song. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give the present. Thank you. The picture were taken right after ceremony. After the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. Shrine. 
Fine. ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Fine. Mm. Fine. 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 Una palabra bien rara, Fine. No sé qué les pasó, Sandra y, y Maritza, que se me, traté de dejarlas en los breakout rooms, pero siempre se me salían ustedes. <risa> es que salía sí. dos veces, teacher. Ah. Pero de ahí no tocábamos nada y a, automáticamente no sí. salía. Es que yo, no las estaba, yo las estaba moviendo. La cosa es que, o sea, había un grupo que estaba solo con tres personas, entonces y las estaba queriendo mover en ese grupo, pero las veces en las que estuvieron, no sé por qué después se me salían y fue como, ¿qué pasó? Pero bueno, ojalá la próxima, no, la, ojalá el, la próxima sí nos funcione. Y estaba en grupo de cuatro y después con Marixi y así está. <risa> <risa> Saltando de aquí para allá. Bueno, um, ¿saben que Me fijé una cosa, les dije, les pregunté, y eso, eso siempre, siempre lo hago antes que vayamos a hacer prácticas, eh, si están ustedes ya listos con todas las palabras, ¿verdad? Um, estaba notando de que las dos que le estaban complicando algo la cosa, era shrine, pero esa es normal, ¿sí? Pero la de bride and groom, ¿sí? Ahora, antes que nada, ¿saben ustedes qué significa bride and groom? ¿Tienen algún novio idea? y la novia. Novia, novia. novia. Bride es novia y groom es novio. El novio, exactamente. Bride and groom. Ahora, eh, a muchos escuché eso, que les estaba costando bastante pronunciar la parte de bride más que todo. Y es groom, sí, no broom, porque broom es escoba. Es groom con, con G. Um, pero sería bride, sí. Bride para la novia y groom para el novio. Ok, eso, ese nombre, ese título se va a utilizar solamente el día de la boda. O sea, ya después, para nada, antes, o sea, son, si no es fiance, o sea, que es el, el prometido, ¿verdad? Sería girlfriend, boyfriend, dependiendo, pero normalmente como funciona la situación es que, o sea, son girlfriend and boyfriend for a long time, then they turn into fiances for at least for like six months or a year. And then, on the day of the wedding, they are bride and groom. And after that, they are husband and wife or spouses, depending on what you want to, um, to use to refer to, to that relation between the two people. Now, um, I wanted to go ahead and practice a little bit of the stress and rhythm before we had to go, but wait. Sorry, um, but uh, we don't have time. Solamente les quería recordar que ya de forma oficial mañana vamos a tener clases, ¿sí? Aunque siempre también me gusta mencionar, ¿verdad? El, el, cuando tenemos clases así de reposición, es entendible que ustedes, o sea, algunos tal vez no se puedan unir porque pues está fuera del horario regularmente acordado, ¿verdad? Sí esperaría, o sea, que la mayoría eh, hagan el esfuerzo de estar mañana. Va a ser la última clase de la semana, clase número 8, cerrando ya básicamente la mitad, ¿verdad? De, de este módulo. Um, entonces, pero ya con eso, la próxima semana iniciamos co con una lista ya en blanco. Así que, pues, mañana a la misma hora eh, estaríamos trabajando para cerrar, ¿verdad? Esa, esa clase que teníamos, o menos que tenía en deuda con ustedes. Bueno, um, so, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any questions or anything before we go. No. No, oh, no it's questions. okay. Okay. Very good. I like it then. All right. So um, thank you guys very much uh, this evening. I think the time went by relatively quickly. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your attention and participation. I hope you are going to thank be here you. tomorrow. Sure. You're very welcome. I hope you're going to be here tomorrow and uh, we can continue working. So thank you. See you tomorrow and have a really good night. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.